name is Tiffany and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am back with another upcycle by Little Toe where I take old forgotten items and give them a new life. If you like DIY and sewing videos, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As some of you may know, I am Malaysian Chinese and I celebrate Chinese New Year, also known as Lunar New Year, which is a 15-day festival marking the beginning of the lunar calendar year. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I make my Lunar New Year outfit out of some thrifted curtains. So let's get started. I found three panels of this curtain at my local thrift store and I am so in love with this pattern. I've also been more mindful of the types of materials I've been thrifting lately, so I love that this is 100% cotton. When I was thinking about what I wanted to make, I initially planned on making a Cheongsam inspired jumpsuit, but then I changed my mind and decided to make them separate pieces. So I'm going to make pants and a top, and I can mix and match those pieces, making them a little bit more wearable. I'm going to start with the pants, and I'm going to be using these pants that I made last year as a guide, and I'm just going to start out by tracing out the pattern. Here is my front leg pattern piece, and here it is cut out of the fabric. Next, I drafted these pocket pieces and went ahead and cut them out of the fabric. These pieces will be stacked creating the pocket bag. I've decided to use French seams for this project, so instead of sewing them right sides facing, I'm placing them wrong sides facing and sewing along here and here. This is what it looks like sewn together, and I've also clipped the corner here to reduce some bulk. Now I'm turning it so that it's right sides facing, and I'll sew this along here and here again. Here it is sewn together, and you can see that all of the raw edges are encased and neatly hidden. Next is to sew the pocket bag to my pants. I'm tucking the second layer under to get it out of the way for now, and I'm placing this top layer right sides facing to my pants, making sure that everything lines up nicely. Now I'll sew along this curve here. This is what it looks like sewn together, and now I'm just cutting away the excess fabric. Then I clip as close to the seam as I can so that everything lays nice and flat when I turn it to the right side. I gave that a good press and I also top stitch along the curve, keeping everything in place. Here is what the front pant leg looks like now with the pocket sewn on, and I also sewed along the edge here just to help keep the pocket in place while assembling the pants. Following the same steps, I went ahead and made my other front pant leg. I wanted to quickly show you all something that I'm really proud of, and it is a little bit extra, but if you know me, you won't be surprised at all. But I also pattern match my fabric so that the image on the front of each panel still lines up and looks seamless. I'll sew these together along the center front and you should have something that looks like this. Just like the pockets, I used a French seam for this. Here is the pattern for the back of my pants and here is the fabric cut out. Next is to sew on the dart and you should have something that looks like this. I've done the same to my other back piece and I'll sew these together along the center back, but only till this point leaving the rest open for the zipper. Here it is sewn together with this top section left unsewn. Now I'm placing my front pant pieces right sides facing and I'll sew these together along the side seams. This is what the pants should look like now and next is to add the waistband. I cut out these three pieces that match the measurements of my waist. I've also ironed on interfacing for added stability. I'll sew them together and this will be my shell waistband. Following the same steps, I made my lining waistband, which does not have interfacing, and I'll use this a little later. Now I'm just pinning the shell waistband onto the top of my pants. I'll sew this together, and you should have something that looks like this. Next step is to insert the invisible zipper, and this is what it looks like sewn in. Now I'm pinning my lining waistband to my shell waistband right sides facing, and I'll sew these together. This is what it looks like sewn together, and now I'm just turning it to the inside of the pants. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch along the top of the entire waistband. Here is a close up of it pinned, and I also wanted to show you that I tucked in this edge by the zipper for a clean finish. This is what it looks like sewn, and you can see that the bottom of the lining waistband is still not yet attached. I'm gonna fold the raw edge under, and I'll top stitch all the way around, securing the waistband in place. We are almost done with the pants, and next step is to sew the inseam together. Okay, so I went ahead and tried the pants on to make sure that everything was fitting nicely. However, the inseam of my pants are way too short and oh my god, this is so embarrassing, but I have some major camel toe issues happening right now. Because of the inseam issue, you can see that there's also some pulling happening in the front here. The rest of the pants are actually fitting okay, so now I'm going to show you how I fix this issue by adding a gusset, which saves me from cutting up brand new pattern pieces. I cut out this diamond shape to use as my gusset. I estimated this measurement based on what I thought I needed and luckily it ended up working out. Here are the pants and you can see that I've already seam ripped the inseam here. 
For reference, this is the center front seam and this is the center back seam. Now I'm lining up one side of the gusset to the front leg panel and I'm pinning it in place and I'll sew to secure. Here's what it looks like sewn together and I'll repeat these steps for the other side. This is a close-up of what the gusset looks like sewn in. Again, I used a French seam so that all of the raw edges are neatly hidden. Here are the pants on and you can see that they fit so much better now. Last step is to hem the pants by folding the raw edge over twice and sewing. Moving on to the top, I'm going to be using this pattern as a base. I don't want this top to have that overlapping flap on the chest, so I'm going to show you exactly how I modify the pattern. Here is the original pattern. This is the center front line, and this is the curve that forms the overlapping chest flap. For my top, I'll only trace this side of the pattern and not this side, and this is what it should look like. I shortened the pattern using this line as a guide, and I've also extended the armhole. Using this pattern, I cut out my fabric and you can see here that it was cut on fold. Next is to sew on all the darts and you should have something that looks like this. Moving on to the back. I've gone ahead and traced out my pattern, again adjusting the length as well as the armhole. The original pattern is meant to be cut on fold, but since my top will have an opening along the center back, I added a half inch seam allowance here to my pattern. If you saw my Lunar New Year dress from last year, you'll know that I cut out an arch in the back and I really liked that so I'm going to do the same for this top. Last year, I used elastic to help with the fit of the arch, but this time I want to try to modify the pattern to fit the curve of my back without using elastic. And I have an idea in my head that I think will work so I'm going to go ahead and try it out. I'm going to start by cutting out the dart and then bringing this together and taping it in place. Now I'm going to freehand an arch and cut that out. Now that I've done all of that, I think I should have just drawn the arch without taping the dart together because I think I would have ended up with the same pattern, but you never know until you try, right? I'm probably still going to have some issues with the fit in the back, but I'm just going to keep sewing for now and then deal with that later. Using my modified back pattern, I cut out my fabric for both sides. Then I place my back pieces on my front piece, right sides facing, and I'll sew these together along the shoulder seams and you should have something that looks like this. Next is to add the collar. Traditionally for a Cheong Sam, the collar comes in one piece and it attaches in the front with a button, but for my top, I'm going to split my collar into two pieces since it attaches in the back. Here are the two pieces I'll be using for my shell collar and here is what I'll use for the lining. I'm placing them right sides facing and I'll sew along here and here and this is what the collar should look like now. To attach the collar to the top, I find the center point of my neckline and I'll pin just the shawl collar to the neckline right sides facing and I'll sew to secure. This is what it should look like sewn together. I then used an old bed sheet to make a lining for my top and now I'm repeating the same steps but this time I'll sew just the lining layer of the collar to the top lining. Here is a close-up and you can see that the lining is sewn to the lining collar and the shell collar is sewn to the shell. Now that the collar is sewn on, I'm starting on this side and flipping my layers so that they are right sides facing. I'm going to sew the shell to the lining together starting from the top of the collar and then down this arch. I've gone ahead and turned it to the right side and given it a good press and you should have something that looks like this. The other side is not yet sewn together and I'm going to add my buttonhole closure here first. For the buttonhole closure, I've decided to use this button loop tape, and this just saves me from having to sew little individual button loops. I'm lining up the button loop tape along this edge here, and I'll sew this down to secure. Here is a close-up, and you can see that I ended up cutting off every other loop. Now that that's done, I can place my pieces right sides facing, and sew together to secure. Here is what the top should look like now with the button loops sewn on. Next is to sew the side seams together, starting with the lining pieces and then the shell. I'll do this on both sides and this is what the top should look like at this point. Next is to add the waistband. I cut out a long strip of fabric and you can see here that I rounded out the edges. Then I cut out an identical strip which I'm placing right sides facing and I'll sew together starting from this point all the way around ending at this point. Here it is sewn together and you can see that this section is left unsewn. To attach it to my top, I'm placing it in between the waistband layers and I'll sew this together, sandwiching the top in between. I started by pinning one layer of the waistband right sides facing to the top and once it's sewn together, you can see that the back waistband is still not yet attached. I've gone ahead and pressed this raw edge under and now I'll just top stitch everything in place. The finished waistband will tie in the back and now it's time to add the sleeves. 
Here is the sleeve I cut out and I'll start by sewing this together. I also folded the seam allowance under and sewed it in place hiding all of the raw edges. This was actually the hem of the original curtain so it was already folded over twice and now I'll sew in the elastic creating a gathered hem. I've gone ahead and sewed a basting stitch along the top of the sleeve and now I'll pin the sleeve to my top pulling on the basting stitch to create gathers. I'll sew this together and you should have something that looks like this. Next step is to sew on the other sleeve and this top is almost done. This is what the inside looks like now and I'll hand sew the lining to the sleeves and Daisy was kind enough to keep me company while I did this. Here is the finished sleeve all sewn in and you already know it makes me so happy when the inside looks as neat as the outside. Finally, I sewed on these gold buttons and just when I thought I was done, I had a tiny little problem. Just as I predicted, I tried on the top and you can see here that there is a little bit of gaping happening. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unpick the waistband and then add a small dart here. I'm a little bit bummed that I have to add a dart in the back because I really wanted a seamless finish. But if anybody knows how I can fix this fit issue, let me know in the comments below. Here is the top with the dart added and the fit is looking a lot better. I feel like I've been neglecting Daisy a little bit and I haven't made her a dress in a while so I'm gonna go ahead and make her a little matching dress. I use the same pattern as I always do to make Daisy's little dress and her tiny dresses always look so freaking cute. Now that Daisy's dress is done, here is what my outfit looks like on. I love that it brings in the elements of my tradition and heritage but with a modern twist. I know that cropped pants are not for everyone but I wanted them this length so that I could also dress them down with sneakers. Here is a better look at the mandarin collar and this top definitely falls in the business in the front and party in the back category. I also love the way these dainty gold buttons look all done up. Overall, I'm pretty much obsessed with this top. Here is Daisy looking so freaking cute in her little dress but I also have a surprise for you all because my mom is visiting me from Malaysia so I had to make her a matching outfit as well. Her top features a Peter Pan collar that buttons in the back with the same gold button as my top. My mom loves shorts so I had to make them for her and how good does she look in this set? I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you want to see more photos of this outfit, I'm going to be posting them on my Instagram so you can check them out there. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about this outfit and if you have any suggestions of what I should upcycle next. A very happy Lunar New Year and I'm wishing you all a fantastic year of the rabbit. And as always, thank you so much for watching.